all of our returning subscribers know that I often start my videos with a little bit of a journey that sets the stage for the topic we are covering. If you aren't in the mood for my shenanigans and you simply just want the baby and none of the labor pains, then I encourage you to use the chapter markers to skip ahead. If you're new, welcome, and I hope you let the video play and take in the full experience and enjoy the journey. Also, it's never too early to hit that like button. So let's go. Forecasting has always been a major part of our human experience throughout time. And while it's taken many forms, it's never lost its popularity throughout the ages. Our great desire to be able to see the future has provoked us to give meaning to the stars, look into crystal balls, use tarot cards, read the lines in the palms of people's hands, read tea leaves, coffee, you get the point. So what is really our fascination with knowing what's going to happen in the future? In my opinion, the answer is straightforward in just one word, hope. It's hope with assurance running a close second. Hope explains why we ignore predictions we don't like or that don't fit our belief system of what we think will happen in the future. Assurance because the unknown can be scary so we look for signs and seek guidance from people who we believe are more insightful, knowledgeable, or can give us the answers to difficult questions. Be it fortune tellers or people predicting the price of gold and silver, we all wanna know and we all wanna hear things that give us hope and assurance that we are making the right decisions right now, that things will be better and more favorable in the future. At the same time, if it doesn't provide hope, assurance, or it's something we don't like or don't want to hear, next thing you know, we're over there singing, we don't talk about Bruno, no, no, no. Okay, some of y'all will get that in Kanto reference later. So what does this really have to do with investing in gold and silver? Well, one, investing can be very emotional. Besides our family and our loved one, money ranks pretty high in terms of importance. And research shows that the more emotionally involved you are, the harder it is for you to think and be intellectual. And so this is why you hear me talk about managing your emotions as an investor and that you as the investor is far more important than the investment. The second point really gets to the heart of why I started Stackers University. Our educational system does not adequately prepare us when it comes to topics like money, budgeting, finance, and investing. And I say that as a lifelong educator. And it's not a dig at teachers or educators. The reality is that our system was not created with these goals in mind. Stackers University is about helping you increase your knowledge so that you aren't at the mercy of the people and their predictions. Instead, you look and learn from the conditions that are available and information that you can get. I want you to be able to take in information and know how to process it. Don't get me wrong. I have zero problems with market forecasts, modeling, or projections, but predictions are something a little bit different. There are an incredible number of knowledgeable experts here on YouTube that are more than qualified to give forecasts and projections. At the same time, there are a lot of people that just aren't. But apparently that doesn't stop them one bit. Have you ever noticed that often the predictions follow this all too familiar script? Let me share it with you. First, you make a bold prediction, which typically grabs a hold of someone's dreams, hopes, or fears. For example, gold's gonna go to $5,000, you pick the number. Next, they tell us something that we already believe is true and we wanna hear to be true. Then they try to play on our need for confirmation bias to provide the hope and assurance we seek. Fourth, while they'll give a number, they usually avoid giving a date, which ensures that they will eventually be right. And five, if their prediction doesn't come true, then they'll point to a marketing condition that change, which then allows them to either adjust their prediction or change the timeline or make excuses. Kind of like, you know, inflation is the result of the Russian Ukrainian war. Unfortunately, there aren't any consequences for these predictors if they are wrong, but there are plenty for you if you follow their advice. I get it. Someone puts someone on their channel or their show and sensationalization sells and grabs view. So their prediction has to be what will happen and not what may happen or might happen or is likely to happen, which is actually a major clue for you as the viewer. There's a vital difference between stating what might happen and proclaiming or projecting what will be. If you find value in this video thus far, hit that subscribe button because Stackers is here to help you get the most medals for your dollars, and I don't want you to miss a single video. Plus, it helps the channel grow and help more people, especially as we're trying to sprint to a thousand subscribers. 
Also, give yourself a and me a thumbs up for taking the next step towards greater wealth by clicking that thumbs up button and checking out the new animation that comes with it. To counter all of this, I want you to fully embrace this old adage, focus on the conditions, not the predictions. This is critical because when you focus on the condition, it helps you manage your emotions. With your emotions being managed, you think clearer and your ex expectations become more realistic. You can also adjust your strategy and make decisions because you're less emotionally involved and you're thinking more. So you're not looking at the market, holding on to the idea that silver has to go to a hundred, a thousand or whatever. Instead, you can see changes in the market as conditions change and then you can adjust as almost every prediction is nullified as soon as the conditions change. Third, it helps you tune out the noise because you're looking at the conditions, meaning data, facts, et cetera, you're less susceptible to the day-to-day -day chatter, the pundits and people pulling opinions out of dark, stinky parts of their body. I'll let you figure out where that is later on. <laughs> Never mind. And four, it allows you to stay friends with the trend. As the saying goes, the trend is your friend until the end. Momentum plays a part in the decisions to invest and where most people invest. The market goes up, encouraging more people to, to buy. It's a positive feedback loop. The same is true on the way down. This is important because since you're, you're going to be focused on conditions, you can exit an investment or change your strategy because, again, you're not sitting there holding on to the idea that gold or silver has to hit a specific number before you can do anything. Okay, this last one, I'm going to warn you, it's, it's a little nerdy even for me utilizing behavioral finance. Now, behavioral finance is an area of study about markets and how people interact with the markets. But here's, here's what I want you to get before your eyes glaze over. What it boils down to is this idea that the psychological influences and biases that we have affect the financial behaviors and our decisions. And this actually serves as the source and kind of an explanation for all the types of crazy things or market anomalies we see. In other words, people behaving irrationally causes the market to respond in kind. These concepts are critical because, let's be honest, the act of buying or stacking silver really isn't that complicated. But to be good at it, you need to be able to maximize the market opportunities, knowing which moves to make, when to do it, when not to do it. And that takes knowledge and skills. And one of those skills is managing yourself. Going forward, I want you to use the following framework to determine how much credibility you will give the next prediction you hear. These concepts are what I use to help me focus on the conditions and not the predictions. One, question. Before you decide to act on anyone's prediction, I want you to ask these three little questions. What training, education, or experience does this person have to warrant me listening to their prediction? Two, the basis. What are they basing their prediction off of? Is it their gut, their belief system, their hopes, what they are wishing for? Or is it on facts, figures, and data? As a quick aside, this is why I always try to include as much data, facts, and figures, and quotes, or whatever I can find when I present to you. I may be right or wrong, but you will always know that it is based on the best information available to me at the time. Three, check your emotions, then manage your expectations and perspective. Just a simple little shift from silver is being manipulated, should be worth $500, to a belief system of, based on what silver is today, it's reasonable to expect silver to reach 50 by the end of the year and $100 in two or three. This doesn't mean silver couldn't go to 500, but in order to reach 500, I'm pretty sure it has to go through 100. So when silver hits the 100 mark, one, you'll be happy, not disappointed, and two, it will keep you focused on the current conditions and not the prediction. The $100 mark can now become a checkpoint, which will allow you to reassess and ask questions like, is the trend still my friend? Or is it time to take some profits off the table? I want you to think about emotions and thinking as sitting on a teeter-totter or a seesaw opposite of one another. When one goes up, the other side go down. If your focus is on an unreasonable target price of an item, there's a greater tendency to anchor in until that target is met, which can cause you to miss the warning signs of a change or a shift in the market conditions, which will ultimately result in you getting caught behind the curve or off guard. Four, motives. Always think about the motives of the predictor and how that could impact 
their prediction. Even more importantly, focus on your motives for investing in something. It is very possible to invest in the right investment with the wrong motives and end up with subpar results, especially if you have unreasonable expectations. For example, if you just go back three years ago and look on this platform, you will find videos all over the place where pumpers are saying things like silver will be $100 soon and silver is going to the moon in 2019, then 2020, then 2021, and yep, they're still saying it in 2022. If you got into silver because of these videos, you did the right thing with possibly the wrong motives. What was the motives of those that have been saying all those things? Scrap that and just be clear about your motives. Five, price focus blurs your sight. Focusing on a target price will force you to make decisions that will increase your risk. Let me give you an example. As a poker player, I can't tell you how many times I knew it was time to leave, but I kept on because I wanted to complete a stack of chips or I wanted to have a certain whole number worth of winnings only to take hits to my stack and walk away with far less than I could have. Instead of a price focus, as a sophisticated investor, your focus is on changes in the market conditions. That is what drives your decision making. Six, what needs to happen in order for that prediction to be true? I mean, ask yourself, really, seriously, if silver went to $500 this year, what would our world look like? $1,000 silver doesn't terrify you a little bit? I mean, how much would gas be, milk, bread? My point is, when you look at the numbers, all of a sudden you start to view the investment landscape differently. And just maybe $50 silver becomes a much more reasonable target. I'm not saying it couldn't hit. Lord knows it feels like all the right conditions are set up for it. But numbers like 300, 500, 800 an ounce just make my head hurt. Seven, consider the nature of the investment. There are a lot of expectations people have with investing, especially in precious metals. It's important that we fundamentally understand why we invest in precious metals. You heard me say this earlier. We do this because it's a hedge against inflation, a great insurance policy or a safe haven for our money, wealth preservation, a store of value, secure and it's private wealth that's easily transferred to loved ones. And it does have tremendous performance. It has outformed every investment over the last 20 years. Does it offer the potential for explosive growth? Especially now, of course it does. But it's more important that you see that as icing on the cake. There's a reason why we typically don't eat icing by itself. As a reminder, even without icing, cake is still pretty darn good. Even without the moonshot, what gold and silver provide is still pretty darn good. I know I shared this in the last video, but this is why I love Rick Rule's comment about when he will sell some, not all of his precious metal. His statement, as you can see on the screen, is all about the conditions, not about when gold or silver hit a certain price. This really gets to the heart of why I did this video. If you understand the key conditions and the fundamentals driving this or any investment, then you aren't at the mercy of someone else's prediction. Instead, you are empowered to be in control of your decisions and able to own your own results. You won't make rash decisions because some faceless guy on YouTube said that you had to buy now. You would not have gone all in two or three years ago when some of these people were telling you to act now. With that said, we aren't going to throw the baby out with the bathwater. As I shared at the beginning, there are lots of qualified people out there that we could and should listen to. The key distinction is developing the ability to sift through it all and essentially separate the wheat from the chaff. With that, I want to shout out Charles Corrin and Stackage University, if I say so myself. <laughs> okay, let me explain. Charles made a number of comments that were just absolutely exceptional. This comment was about the next last dip maybe now, to which I responded, it looks like we're getting some weakness with the stock market sell-off. Gold just dropped below its 50-day average, so we may pull back to 1920 or 1880. So hold tight, because there may be some short-term volatility, which will create some buying opportunity. Now, the timestamp says a day ago, but I made this comment on Sunday before gold dropped $35 or so. I bring this up because someone out there is going to say, but Dr. Stacker, you made a prediction. And while technically you could argue that, I saw and I see that as a probability statement. My statement was based on conditions, data, and facts. As I mentioned, gold had just crossed the 50-day moving average. Not good. 
I also know that the last time gold had a good run up like this in 2020, when it crossed the 50 day moving average, then it had a, a nice solid sell off. I also know we're at the end of the month. So we're also continuing with the end of the month profit taking. That's what I was sharing. And I hope you can see the distinction. Please share your thoughts in the comment section or respond to these questions. How do you feel about price predictions? What was the craziest price prediction you've heard? Give your own price prediction for gold or silver. Hit the like button and subscribe so we reach more people and to make sure you don't miss a single video. You know how we do this. Always stack smarter and never stop learning. And let's also stop the insanity.